Hi everybody, Patricia Warby, Alchemy Therapies here and Rebel Health Radio and now MyEmotionalAudit.com and a quick talk today about low thyroid, hypothyroidism and the hidden signs that you may have or people you know may have that indicate that your thyroid, something is wrong and it's not working properly. Now, one of the main signs actually is a hoarse or croaky voice. <laughs> Obviously, there's many other reasons why you might have that. So um, there's no one sign that absolutely points to low thyroid, although possibly the one that stands out above all is a low body temperature. And you can measure that with a, a digital thermometer. And anything that's less than a degree below what you should have, which is roughly 38 or I think it's in Fahrenheit, it's 97, um, might indicate that your metabolism is running slow because that's kind of what your thyroid does is it runs your meta metabolic processes. And so it's all about producing heat as a result of your metabolism. And therefore, if your body temperature is low, it suggests that the thyroid hormone is not working or not being produced properly. It's either not being produced enough or it's actually not being a, a converted in the, the, the right way. So you've got you've got two thyroid hormones, a T4 and a T3. And um, it's the T3 that actually does the activity that converts. So it's uh, here are the here are the signs then, apart from a croaky voice, which you'll notice I have, because I do do suffer unfortunately from low thyroid. I have what's called Hashimoto's. Um, now it can be treated, obviously, I'll talk about that in a moment, but uh, another one that you might not be aware of is a puffy face. Now some mornings I used to wake up and I used to notice under my eyes, um, it was quite puffy. Um, my tongue would be swollen sometimes. Uh, sometimes I couldn't get my rings onto my fingers in the morning. That's another cardinal sign. Um, eyelid swelling. Uh, so I had a period where when I was working, uh, when I was doing an office job uh, about four or five years ago, where my eyes were so sore in the morning, and particularly if I'd been doing computer work, and I had no idea what that was. Um, but the eyes can actually droop as well. So drooping eyelids. Um, so it's difficult for you to open your eyes easily. Uh, they can get red and irritated and dry. For me, that was the main symptom. Um, Visual disturbances, sometimes a sort of flickery uh, nature. I've had that for years and didn't realise that was partly thyroid. And excessive sleep, in other words, that stuff that collects in the corner of your eye when you wake up. Um, I've actually had a condition called blepharitis, which is where your eyelids are quite swollen. And, and I, I went to see um, the doctor and eventually the nurse practitioner saw me and said blepharitis needed me to rinse my eyes out with liquid soap every morning. I'm just going to stop there. Liquid soap. So they recommended ba Johnson's baby uh, shampoo uh, in, in very dilute amounts and, and you rinse your eyes with it, which of course is painful beyond belief. Because what they were saying was it's blocked ducts, blocked tear ducts that stop and the oils get clogged. Well, the reason they get clogged is because your body temperature is low. And so oils are very, very uh, dependent on temperature, as, as you might know from, say, coconut oil or whatever, that's solid at one temperature and then it's liquid very quickly at another temperature where the oils in your body are very, very similar. But nobody ever explained to me that blepharitis could be due to um, a problem with my thyroid. And so that was about 15, maybe 16 years ago now when obviously my thyroid was starting to malfunction. So um, cataracts can also be partly due to that, although they're also low uh, antioxidants in the eye and um, glaucoma. So anything in kind of affecting the visual uh, clarity of the eye. Brittle nails. Now, um, and another cardinal sign here is uh, losing the half moon, the half, sorry, that looked a bit rude, uh, losing the half moon on the base of your nail and having vertical ridges. Um, so that your nails don't just get brittle, they get these vertical rid ridges. And I, I don't think you can see that it's, it's not close up enough, but you can feel them when you run your, when you run your other finger over them. Cold hands and feet, really common. Uh, but this is for people who've got low thyroid, this is all the time. It, it, it's almost independent of body 
of, of outdoor temperature, although it's worse in the winter, of course. Um, uh, diminished perspiration, right? You can't sweat easily, right? You, you go into a sauna and you can't sweat. Absolutely cardinal sign. It gets easier as you begin to treat your body and start to replace some of the missing minerals and vitamins. And the more saunas you do, the more you kind of encourage your body to learn to sweat. But that's that's interesting. And also, and this seems contradictory, but you get hot flushes um, and excess body heat. And, and we tend to mix that up with menopause for women, which is, you know, just a normal part of the transition to sort of later life. But it's made so much worse if your thyroid is low. And, and so that's a real big problem. Um, mental effects include depression, nervousness, irritability. I mean, you could say that's natural life, normal life situations. Um, but you can get kind of manic behavior and a feeling of insects crawling under your skin. Now, that's a really interesting one, which I remember reading about. It's got a, a medical name, which I can't remember, some weird medical term, um, but it's absolutely linked to low thyroid. So uh, I remember Joni Mitchell, the singer, songwriter suffered from that a few years ago and I don't know if anybody ever got to the bottom of it for her but um, hopefully thyroid was discovered to be low and she was treated. It causes infertility um, and menstrual problems for women and hormonal issues generally because hormones are not just a, a, a linear thing they they operate according to checks and balances they're sort of like a web of interaction so one one hormone goes out it shifts all the others constipation difficulty with actually going to the toilet is is another really common one and everything gets sluggish and slow as you can imagine so thyroid will affect uh, your gut in that very very definite way how about swallowing difficulties have you ever found that you couldn't swallow or it was difficult to do uh, again this tied in with me uh 15, 16 years ago, and I had no idea what it was. I, I put it down to anxiety or something like that, which of course it is linked with um, due to the vagus nerve, which innervates all around the head and neck, but it's also another sign of low thyroid. Um, I've already mentioned hoarseness uh, and slowness of speech. So if you're finding that you, you can't get your words out, that could be an indication. And dry skin. Um, I had dry skin for years and didn't realize, uh, particularly on the elbows and knees. Um, you can also get like uh, eczema, psoriasis and moles and warts. Do you get lots of moles and warts on your hands or feet? I've had that again, long, long time. Didn't realize it was linked. Um, fungal infections can be a sign. So fungal toenails, um, particularly the big toenail, if that seems to get infected could be actually a sign of low thyroid because you need your metabolism to function well with your immune system. You need, you need energy to run your immune system. Uh, high cholesterol. My cholesterol started to creep up once I hit my sort of early 40s for no reason I could determine because I don't eat too much sugar. I'm, I'm fairly healthy in my diet. Um, or high or low blood pressure because it starts to affect the way your heart regulates. Hair loss. And, uh, this is a very common one. You'll see a lot of women with thinning hair. Um, uh, men, of course, it's more likely through just that normal uh, balding pattern. But with women, hair loss is absolutely linked to thyroid. And it's particularly bad around the top parts. If your, your hair starts to thin here and recede and your female look to thyroid, as a possible cause. And the outer edge of your, of your eyebrows, and you'll see me here, I've got a slightly thinner outer edge of my eyebrow, um, but that's a common one. And eyelash loss, you know, do your eyelashes keep falling out? Are you getting, are they getting very thin and sparse? And dry hair generally, so uh, loss of oils uh, in, in the system for the same reason that I've already explained with eyelids. Muscle weakness or spasms. People tend to think that's just down to low magnesium. Um, and magnesium is definitely implicated to give you uh, a 
cramp, what we call cramp or muscle spasms, but your thyroid is absolutely part of that story as well. And weight, if you start to have sudden weight gain or gradual weight gain over a period without changing your diet, which happened to me, um, it, it's, an, it's an indicator that your, your metabolism isn't running properly. And teeth problems. Um, I asked my dentist this and he had no idea I, um, that teeth problems, you know, um, sensitivity, for instance, uh, particularly after dental treatment or generally just with cold and hot drinks. Um, TMJ, this, this temporomandibular joint, which links kind of the upper to the lower part of your jaw. And, and can get very, very sore and it can cause a lot of aching and pain and you might have to grind your teeth at night to, to kind of relieve that. And so um, these kind of TMJ issues and enlarged gums, are your gums swollen? Do they bleed a lot? Uh, and, and how about excessive earwax? Well, that is such an interesting one because um, I went suddenly very deaf uh, at the same time, I had all these other issues about 15 years ago due to a buildup of earwax. I lost the hearing in both ears. And of course, you can get that treated, but nobody ever explained to me why it happened so suddenly. Well, I think my thyroid was just collapsing at that point. Um, and the tendency to fall over or walk awkwardly. So a loss of kind of vestibular balance is also implicated. So the thyroid is low. Now, the thing about thyroid function, I must tell you, is that um, you go to a doctor, you'll get a very standard measurement of your TSH, um, and that's thyroid stimulating hormone produced by your pituitary gland. And it's a very rough and ready measure. And if the TSH is high, it indicates the pituitary, which is linked to your thyroid. It's in a chain from your hypothalamus, your pituitary and your thyroid. And, and if the thyroid is not functioning well the pituitary has to work so much harder to kind of kick kick the thyroid into action and so the tsh value will become very high and mine was over nine which is extremely high it should be under two so um so the measurement unfortunately doesn't tell you why it doesn't tell you what's going wrong and the standard medical model will tell you you just need extra thyroid hormone and they will give you a synthetic thyroxine uh, either, either levothyroxine or synthroid, which uh, isn't a natural thyroid hormone. It isn't recognized by the body as a natural thyroid hormone. It will function similarly, but it doesn't have all the information content that natural thyroid hormone has. And because it's a version of T4 and not T3, if your body isn't converting properly, which mine doesn't, um, you it won't do much apart from maybe give you heart palpitations and make you feel very agitated so for me uh synthetic thyroid hormone was not the answer and i needed to learn how to be able to convert properly and and so i've been taking um supplementation which is generally um b2 b3 um zinc magnesium there are a few others which i've been into in more detail in my other thyroid talks but I just thought the, the symptomology was just so interesting. I wanted to share that with you. Be aware that no one of these indicates on its own thyroid dysfunction. It's the combinations, of course. So they are uh, necessary, but they are not uh, solely responsible. So it is, it's about building the symptom picture. If you find that this chimes with you in any way and that you might be considering that you have low thyroid, first of all, check your body temperature. That's the first thing to do. Secondly, go and find a nutritional therapist or a holistic practitioner because they'll be able to do proper testing for you, which your GP will not be able to do. And they'll also have better solutions, I think, in, in the longer term, because you work with the body's own natural healing mechanisms rather than just the, the symptom. So thank you for listening. Um, if anybody's interested in more of the holistic aspects of thyroid function, which include um, kind of stress function, um, the relationship with your life purpose and that sort of thing, that's something I do deal with. Um, otherwise, I hope you can get some relief and thank you for listening. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.